fast-moving digital world of televised sport these days, the shape of things can change quickly. As we saw yesterday with the arrival of this brand-new player out of the blue, Coliseum Sports Media, now the holder of the EPL, the English Premiership League football rights here in New Zealand. Uh, so essentially what appears to have taken place here, in, in, in the simpler form as I can put it, is that the EPL has shifted from your telly to your laptop. Uh, there's a few more branches to the tree than that, but... Um, if you want to watch it from now on, if you want to watch the English Premiership, you have to pay over and above your Sky subscription. And a whole range of reactions have taken place over the last 24 hours. We're very pleased to have with us this morning uh, the boss of Coliseum Media, the company that holds these rights. The CEO is uh, Tim Martin. He's with me now. Tim, thank you very much for your time. Good morning. My pleasure. Good morning. Been a fairly hectic 24 hours for you, is it? Yeah, it's been pretty exciting. It's been pretty full on, but uh, it's great. We're uh, It's great to sort of be underway, really. The announcement yesterday... Would you have liked a wee bit more time or were you forced because of uh, media leaks uh, to get on the front foot yesterday earlier than you might otherwise would like to have done? We would have loved another week, um, but the media were ready to go and the story was out there and we felt it was really important to, um, you know, to, to reassure football fans that the Premier League's not going away, that in fact it's... Um, going to be an enhanced experience for all football fans. There's going to be more Premier League than ever before. There's more games, there's more content, there's more magazine shows. So we just wanted to get out there and let everyone know that it's actually good news for football fans. What happens now? So what happens now is um, is uh, we carry on with the final stages of the development of the platform and the network, which is, uh, which is well underway. Uh, we've got a lot to do around, you know, getting, um, you know, we're going to do some marketing to get people out there. We're looking at... Um, you know, putting deals together that will enable us to um, really offer some really sharp pricing around um, around um, around the packages. So the start of the season is only a couple of months away, less than a couple of months away. When, when can people start uh, signing up and uh, paying their subscriptions for the next season? Right, so, it- so there's a holding page up now, so anyone who wants to register their interest can on premierleaguepass.com. Uh, and uh, we'll get back to you when the site's up and going. That'll be August 1, uh, is when the site will be up there streaming content. We have a lot of the off-season content that we'll be bringing through, so, you know, the the review of the season, the preview of the next season, all the club guides, the goals of the season, all that sort of stuff will be up there on August 1. Do you have any idea how many people are likely to sign up, how many subscribers you're expecting in your first few months of operation? Well, see, no one really knows exactly how many Premier League fans there are out Mm. there. There's lots of estimates, um, and we've done a bit of modelling and a bit of research. What we're really hopeful is that, uh, you know, football fans, and in particular English Premier League fans, will, this will be a a service that they want. It's it's really great. You know, it's so much content. It's everything they want. It's, uh, it's, It's the devices that they want. Um, you know, including TV, and I'd really stress that we see this as a TV product. Um, I understand that there's concern about how you get something off the internet onto your TV. Um, PremierLeaguePass.com will detail that, the easiest ways to do that. There are lots of easy ways. You mean essentially this is the system whereby you basically, what in layman's terms, uh, run, a, run a cable from the back of your laptop into your TV and you, and you watch it on TV? That's one way. Yeah, that's, that, that, one that's, way. that's legal, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's totally cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 the, that's an easy way to do it. You know, other ways to do it is you can put it through Apple Airplay, which is a, which is a great thing. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, I, look, I've got no stake in Apple, I'll tell you that. But that Apple TV is really something. It's a great product. Um, and you can Airplay anything through that up onto your TV. Through the internet. Did you look at the idea that uh, other private enterprise organisations have done that, that have in the television field of just going onto the Sky Digital platform? Yeah, we didn't look at that initially, and we were open to anything. Anything that serves our customers best is what we would do. I mean, we really have the fan at the core of our business. And the great thing about being a digital channel is we can react very quickly to what they want and what they need. Again, being a website with all the stuff that goes with that, you know, our emails and our Facebooks and our Twitters and all that stuff. Uh, we'll have a two-way dialogue with people. I mean, yeah, we're already asking yeah, them what Tim, they want. Tim, people, what I hear, what I'm seeing already, is that people like tradition. They like to stick to the, th- the way traditional things are done. You turn sure. the TV on and you watch a game of football. You could have right. done that, couldn't you? Yeah, we could, and, we, and we still could. If that's what everyone really wants, and that seems to be the best thing to do, of course that's a possibility. We're ruling nothing out. Would, would Sky be happy to have you on their digital platform, given the fact that you've taken one of their sports? I don't know. Like I, I don't look. I've never met anyone from Sky. I don't know that much about them. 
Um, so it's not really a question for me. About so, so do you have any reservations about whether there will be some resistance from folk who think, oh, well, you know, this idea of having to get my laptop out and run cables around the back into the TV and, and, and pay an extra fee, do you, you don't think that collectively these little issues might prevent a lot of people from signing on with you? I'm sure that because we are the first guys to do this, there is going to be some nervousness around what we're offering and some guys might find it all too hard. I really hope they don't. It's not hard. I mean, most people can watch a clip on YouTube and essentially this is no different. You know, it's a different web address, but it's exactly the same thing behind it. It's a much gruntier back end, um, but the principle is exactly the same. What about these issues which come up when you're online? You know, the, the, the broadband facility here, is it big enough, strong enough? technically capable enough i mean uh can you assure listeners for example that uh, the the picture won't break down after 20 seconds yeah no the uh the, we, we have invested a huge amount in the back-end delivery of the system um and the broadband quality in new zealand is improving all the time we don't need massively fat pipes like ma massive amounts of pipe to get a stream down the line with the server network that we've got in new zealand connected through fiber uh, we've got adaptive streaming, which means we send the each 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 for each device. Each stream comes at three different uh, stream rates, so you go from 800 kilobits per second to 1600 kilobits per second to 3000 kilobits per second. So regardless of the quality of your broadband connection, you can get a feed, uh, and it will and it will stream. Mm. But and on top of that, of course, then then is the cost, isn't there, of the data that you use? That's right. So uh, again, how, how much how much how much data would you use, for example, for a, a ninety minute game of football? So for a two hour feed, which is the um, which is what you get when you get the game, so it's you know it's the and it's mm. all Premier League produced. That's mm. going to consume at sixteen hundred kilobits per second, which is how I watch all my sport, which is great. Is uh, one point one gig, and so if you watch ten Premier League games a month. You're talking a total, you know, in their entirety, you're talking a total of 11 gigs a month. Now, that's not a huge amount. Most New Zealanders, we know this for a fact, is the vast majority of New Zealanders don't get anywhere near to using up the data on their data plans. What about people who live in rural parts of the country? I mean, we hear all the time about the difficulties they have uh, w w with their internet connections and their speed connections and so forth. Uh, what, what assurances can you give them? So for guys who really just can't get a good broadband connection, we felt it was really important that we provided the content another way. And therefore, that is why we approached TVNZ and why we have come to a, you know what we think is a great deal for all New Zealanders around the Premier League. And TV1 will be screening a you know hot off the satellite match of the week um, every Sunday afternoon from 12 till 2, which gives everyone a chance to get involved in the Premier League for the first time in a generation for free. Will it be the match of the day, necessarily? It'll be, uh, yeah, I mean, that TV and Z get to pick the match, but what they have to do, the, the confines for all of us and everything to do with every aspect of the English Premier League is you have to have an equal weighting between teams. So what TV and Z will not allowed, be allowed to do is just show Manchester United every second week, <laughs> yes, right? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, Hull's going to get their day in the sun. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, the great thing about the English Premier League and why it's the best sporting competition in the world is that every team is playing for something. Mm. And the prices that uh, I read about yesterday, can you confirm those? It's, what, 250 bucks. Uh, a year for the premier for the premium package, but 150 a year for a reduced package. Yeah, no, I better clear that one up, yeah. here, Brendan. So, uh, so what that is is um, we consider our entry level package, if you like, yeah. is all 380 games. Yeah, that is going to be 149 dollars ninety for the for the entire season. Oh, okay, yeah. And so you break that down, you're looking at just over 50 cents a game. Or 12 bucks a month or something. 12 bucks a month. We yep. unfortunately don't have monthly packages at this stage, so yep, you've got to yep. buy it all in one whack. Yeah. Um, but again, it re we believe that represents amazing value for money for football fans. For those guys who want to take that uh, and a bit more into it and want to take that relationship a bit further, you know, we have hundreds and hundreds of hours. We have up to six or seven um, magazine style shows produced by the Premier League, including two preview shows per round four review shows per round, a sort of what's happening around the league. Mm -hmm. Plus, we've got a lot more stuff we plan to bring down over the next six months. For all that content, um, that is uh, $239.90. Mm. So in practical terms, it works this way. I pay my 150 bucks to you, so then I can turn my laptop or television on at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I can choose which match I want to watch, right? That's correct. Yeah. So, so you know, on that, you know, so the, the Premier League play on that 3.30 in the afternoon kickoff on the Saturday, they play six games concurrently. Yeah. yeah. So you will have the option 
to choose whichever one of those you want. And if you, you, you can want, watch them all if you want to. You can, yeah. and if you want to, you can split your screen up into four and watch four at the same time. Wow. What about uh, this idea, which is, a, of course, a big thing that Sky have going for them at the moment because the premiership matches are all on between about 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning, the sure. My Sky Factor. Do you have something equivalent that you can we offer do. your customers? Yeah, so because we're the internet, and I can't confirm the exact details yet because you asked would we have loved another week, and I can yeah. say absolutely, Yeah. Uh, because we're just in the final stages of the on-demand offering. Uh, but it'll be very significant. And that will, what that essentially will mean is that all games will just be sitting there and when you want to watch them, you can watch them. Uh, are you concerned about um, pirating here, the illegal streaming of these matches, which I imagine uh, people probably will be able to, if they're clever and devious enough, be able to access, won't they? Yeah, look, oh, we're not concerned about pirating. We accept it. It is a fact of life. If you're into sports broadcasting, which, you know, is unbelievably, I find myself now that I am, um, uh, you know, if you're into that, you accept that pirating occurs. We are a much better offer than a pirated service. And I think in particular in relation to your last point, you can't pirate an on-demand feed. You know, so you can pirate a live game if you want. It's pretty crappy and the site's pretty dirty and, you know, full of pop-ups and, you know, there's bad things lingering on those. Um, but, um, you know, if that's the way you want to do it, that's the way you're going to do it. If you want a really great high-quality feed, that's the thing with all of it. Uh, you can buy it off us. Mm. Um, and if you want it on demand so you can watch it where you want, on the device that you want, wherever you want, uh, okay. you can get it off us. You probably won't want to answer this question, but uh, I imagine to acquire, and I've got no idea what they've, what the cost is, I imagine to acquire the rights for the English Premiership uh, probably cost an arm and a leg. Who's funding you? Where are you getting your money from? Oh, look, I'm really happy to answer that question. So um, we've got an amazing relationship, and Coliseum Sports Media is a partnership. It's between the original founders, which is me and my wife, and a guy named Simon Chesterman. And um, the three of us have going, I've got a partnership running with a company called Cooper & Company, which is a company backed by a guy, guy uh, you know, uh, the, the executive chairman is a guy named Peter Cooper who is an expat Kiwi living in California. Worth $650 million, I read yesterday. I have no idea how much money he's got, but he's, um, he's got some. <laughs> and, um, and that's just that they're amazing guys. So he's funding you? He is. Uh, we're in partnership. So it's not a, it's, uh, you know, we are a legitimate mm. partnership. So, Well, I'd like to get your reaction to a comment yesterday that John Philip made to me here when he said, look, it's, it's easy to, to outbid someone uh, for the rights. He said it's just a simple issue of a, piece of, a number on a piece of paper. He said, but and he obviously doesn't know what you've paid, but he doesn't see, uh, guessing what you've paid, he doesn't see a business case for the money you've paid for these rights. What's your reaction to that? Well, um, I don't think it is a simple case. I, you know, having been through the process, it wasn't a simple case of just writing a big check. That's not what it was. The Premier League don't just give their rights to anyone. You can't just show up and buy it. That's not true, I don't think. Certainly wasn't the case for us. We had to go through a lot of hoops to prove that we were credible and we could deliver an amazing experience to fans. So I think a big part of um, you know, how we got this contract is you know, there's a real sense that we could grow the, the footprint of the English Premier League in New Zealand by making it accessible to 100% of New Zealanders for free. Mm. OK, we'll uh, try Jay. Jay, good morning. Yeah, morning. Um, got a question. I know the website is, has a .com on the end. That's right. Uh, is this service purely just for New Zealanders or are you trying to do a service worldwide? I think it's a really good question. Like, so uh, at the moment, the rights we've got is New Zealand, but I don't know where this is going to go. Do you know what I mean? Like, who knows what sort of journey we're on? But we've certainly set it up. If we wanted to add more, um, if we wanted to add more territories to the platform in the next rights cycle, I don't see why we couldn't do that. So someone living in Australia uh, hears about this, uh, can't in fact subscribe to it. That's correct. So we've got really, really, really good geo-blocking technology. So you will not be able to get this. This is a unique service to New Zealanders. And i got to tell you, when I was up in London at the Premier League conference, the, Londers, the Londoners are jealous as hell. They, they do not get 380 games for one. They can't get 380 games live. That, that's not a service available in England. I thought you could. I thought you, you could pay to, to some provider over there and you could pick and choose the matches that you wanted no, you to watch. Can't. So that's now split between three providers and there is a total of under 200 games live. Okay. That's all you can get in the UK. So is there, is there any other model similar to the one that you're offering uh, existing anywhere else in the world? I don't think so. So again, I've met a lot of the broadcasters because we went up to the... Uh, it was pretty awesome for me, really. We went up to the uh, Premier League uh, hosted conference, the International Broadcasters Conference up in London uh, recently, where I got to meet all these other broadcasters. 
And uh, they were all really interested in what we were doing because it's pretty unique, it appears. I mean, again, I don't know. Like, I, mm. you know, couldn't... I, the 220 countries have got the Premier League beaming it into 720 million homes. So I'm not across everyone. But um, certainly it feels like it's pretty unique at this mm. stage. I suspect it uh, won't be for long. What sort of reaction are you getting, for example, here in official circles from football, from New Football New Zealand here? Uh, Grant McCavan has been great. And he's, look, he's really interested. And we'd love to develop more of a relationship there. And, you know, we're kind of all open to that. He's got a great relationship going with Sky. And one of the things that we've noticed is, you know, Sky have um, agreed to, uh, you know, take a lot more of his content. And that is fantastic because, you know, Coliseum, we don't, you know, we don't have a production facility. That's not, you know, we can't really help a guy like Grant McAvener in that yeah, way. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's an amazing thing Sky are doing. You, you wouldn't, for example, think, hey, why don't, why don't we get out there and televise some local matches in the uh, ASB Championship here and, and put them through your website? We'd love to do that. Look, all that stuff. That, that's in time. In time, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. it's been such a thing to get this. And, um, you know, it's taken a lot. I mean, we're not big, really. And, you um, know. Next cab? All Blacks rugby. Look, uh, we got no plans for rugby at the moment. I mean, the at thing, the moment, at the, well, you know, who knows? Like, yeah. uh, who knows what can happen? Well, in the I, world, I right? presume if this is successful for you, if this venture works, and in twelve months I have you back here in the studio, and uh, you've got a smile as wide as the Harbour Bridge because it's gone so successfully, won't you then start looking at, say, rugby league or, or rugby union or, or, or netball or cricket or something? Surely. Yeah, possibly. I think that's something. I mean, the other thing also that we're really interested in is looking at doing this in other markets. I mean, uh, you know, we've we've got a big footprint in the US through our equity partners. Mm. There's amazing stuff happening in America around the tech. You know, there's all sorts of places we can take this because it's the internet and everyone's got it. Uh, are you talking to Sky? No, I've never met anyone from Sky. Never so, spoken to anyone. Oh, okay, interesting.